In this project, we're going to be deploying two different SQL Server options in Azure. A modern Azure SQL Server Managed Instance and the older Azure SQL Server Single Instance Model. Each solution will be secured with private networking. Azure SQL Server Managed Instance offers near full SQL Server compatibility, natal virtual network integration, and automatic packaging, making it ideal for lift and shift migrations. The single instance Azure SQL Server is more limited in features. It can be simpler and more cost effective for lightweight or legacy workloads. We'll first start by creating a dedicated resource group, virtual network, and subnets to isolate the databases and supporting services. Next, we provision a SQL Server managed instance with general purpose hardware, automated backups, and enforced TLS encryption. Public endpoints are disabled, ensuring the database remains accessible only within the private network. In parallel, we also deploy a SQL Server single instance resource, which is also in a private secured network. To manage both environments, we deploy a lightweight Linux VM hosting adminer, a browser-based SQL client that connects directly to either database. The VM has a public IP with security rules allowing controlled secure access to the base database from the public adminer UI. We also load the Pagula sample database, which we've adapted for SQL Server. This is a, a database that models a DVD rental store. It's uh, fairly well known out there. And what it does, it gives us realistic tables, relationships, and sample data for running queries and exploring database features. By the end of this project, you should have a fully private production-ready SQL Server environment in Azure, featuring both a managed instance and a single instance deployment. As always, the entire build is automated with Terraform and Bash scripts, so you have a clean, repeatable process that you can easily adapt to your own projects and needs. Okay, so let's talk about the architecture diagram and what we're going to build in this project. We are building in the U.S. Central Region, and the first thing we're going to do is create a resource group for everything. And then we're going to create the networking. So we create a virtual network, the SQL Server VNet. And in that virtual network, we're going to have three subnets. And remember, in Azure, subnets are segmented by functions. So we've got three different functions, we have three different subnets. So briefly, we have the VM subnet. That's where we're going to host the Ubuntu 2404 um, VM that's going to install Adminer and load the Pagula database. And then there's two other subnets, one for the SQL Server managed instance. That's a special subnet, a special attribute you have to put on it. The second subnet is the SQL Server instance. And so what we're going to do is we're going to deploy all that and what we'll have is the databases are private and the you can use the adminer for that public IP address from a web browser to access the database. Now, outside the virtual network, we've got a couple other things. We have a DNS zone that we use to um, load up DNS records for these, these, these guys. Instead of just having um, the IP address, we can use a DNS name. And then we have the SQL Server credentials and a key vault. So we don't hard code anything. We, we generate a random password and put it in the key vault. And then for debugging on the VM, SSH is enabled and we do have uh, credentials. Normally we would probably get rid of that in production and use Bastion, but for here, we're gonna use a, a simple VM credentials if you need to debug the admin or UI. Okay, so now let's talk about the prerequisites for building this project. Now there's out there on our channel, there's an Azure and Terraform easy setup. That walks you through how you create an Azure build identity, how you extract out these ARM values, and it does it with a very simple project so you don't have to worry about the complexities. You can just focus on setting up the project. So if you've never done one of these before, you might want to check out that video. What you need is an Azure account with the build identity that we talked about. You need to have the AZ CLI. We use uh, the CLI for gluing the scripts together and the steps. And then you need the latest version of Terraform. Now we're ready to build the code. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to copy this bash code and put it into my development environment, paste it in. And what you will notice in all our projects, we have this script called check ENV. And what that's going to do is go and make sure that you have all the prerequisites defined and log in to Azure to make sure you have permissions to do a build. Then after that, uh, we're going to run the apply. Now the apply takes about um, 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, the build has completed. And so what we're gonna do is go into the Azure console and take a look and see what got built. 
So the first thing you want to do is go to resource groups. And everything in this project was built in the SQL Server resource group. So we'll click on that. And there's a lot of objects in here. But what we're going to do is focus on these two right here. The first one is the SQL Server Managed Instance. This is the more feature complete one. And it has a lot of bells and whistles. But we'll see it's a little more expensive. So if you go into here and it will show you the overview. It actually shows you the databases. We created the Pagula database. When the admin or UI boots, it creates the databases. And let's look at compute and storage. Now, I thought I picked like the, the smallest possible one. And you can see it's $830 a month. So um, with this project, you definitely want to be a good steward of your cloud account and delete this. So within here, you've got all the sort of platform as a service features. You've got the maintenance and updates. This one applies an update. You've got um, backups and restores. And as I understand it, the managed instance is a much more feature rich option. So what you'll compare in is there's a lot more options in the SQL Server managed ones, which probably means there's a lot of ways, a lot of ways to uh, run up a bill. But in any event, uh, I'm not a big SQL Server aficionado, so um, I can't really tell what exactly is different here. But in any event, this is a platform as a service offering. It's the, the newest Azure database SQL Server offering. And there's a lot to it, but it's also pretty pricey, as we saw in the price. Uh, it shows you the databases. What happens if you click on it? That's interesting. It shows you the databases. So let's go back to the SQL Server resource group. And let's look at the single server instance. So that's the SQL Server instance. Slight difference in names. Click on that. It doesn't have the immediate uh, price in here. But it has the very similar things. You've got the SQL databases, the Pagula one we created. It's got uh, backups and restores. It's got a little bit of failover. But you can see there's a lot less in this panel here. So this is generally, as I, I see the prices, I can see if you're doing sort of a small hobby project, because this was only about $100, $150 a month, the way I've configured it. You probably want to go with the SQL Server um single instance if it's a small project but if you're you know an enterprise environment you probably want to use the enterprise but you know hopefully somebody else is paying the bill because it gets pricey so that's it for the two database instances the the managed instance which is the modern uh, incantation of azure sql server and then the sql server single instance which is the original offering by azure so let's go back to the resource group okay so now let's take a look at the admin or vm this is the probably the most important part of this project. This is the, the glue that glues it all together. So here we go. We have a relatively modest Linux Ubuntu 24.4 uh, standard B1S, you know, one CPU, one gig. And what it does is it has a custom data script. And in that custom data script, it installs the Microsoft SQL driver, does a load of the Pagula port that we did for this project. We did this for all three cloud providers, but there's a Azure, there's a GitHub project that's just the SQL Server port of Pagula that we load in. We load that in both, so it takes a little bit longer to boot than the other projects. And then at the end, we install the admin or UI, which is a Apache PHP app. It runs on port 80. And so you go to this um, VM's endpoint, it gives you a UI. You can log into either database server, and we'll see that in the demo. So that's the 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 Ubuntu VM. Remember, it's got a public IP address and a public DNS name. That's what we'll actually use when we do the demo. And the last part in the resource group that we'll take a look at is the credentials. And I did this last because I want to leave this up. And so you go in and you do secrets, and we've got the VM that we talked about. We have the SQL Server, so I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to see version, and I'm going to say show secret value, and we're going to leave this up because we're, we're going to do the demo. So we're going to use this in multiple times. So the password is this generated thing. It's different for every project. And then SQL admin is the, the user. You can't change that. You actually have to use SQL admin. Okay, now for the demo, the first thing we want to do is we want to run validate, validate script. And it's going to go and make sure that admin is running on that. Uh, database and also give you the two database instances to talk to. So I'm going to take this guy here and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put that in a new browser tab. 
And it's going to come up and say, okay, what uh, database do you want to connect to? So if we go back to that validate thing, we'll do the uh, standard single instance, click on that, put that um, in here. The username is SQL admin. And I've got this guy here from the secrets manager. Copy that. Put that in. And then we're going to use Pagulus database. Log in. And this is the DVD rental store database. So there's three tables I'd like to highlight. The first one is the actor table. So you click on that. And you can see these are a bunch of made up actor names for movies. And they're kind of funny how they did it. Like Joe Swank. They kind of combine real actor first names and last names. But it's all... A fundamentally nonsense, which is kind of cute how they did it. Then we have a film. And this is a list of films. And these are also kind of made up. I mean, let's see here. Um, an emotional drama of a shark and database administrator who much vanquished a pioneer and Soviet, I think it's Georgia. So they're, they're again, the, the names are, are kind of funny, uh, but they're, they're completely made up. And so if I click on, uh, we've got foreign keys in this database, so I can click into this. And that's the country code or the language ID, and that movie is in Mandarin. So that's the film table. And then finally, there is the for the purpose of the demo, there is a film actor table. And what it does, it's going to assign each actor to a film. So there's 5,000 of these. So this is a good table for doing joins. So those are the, the three quarter core tables we're looking at. So what we're going to do is do a join. So I'm going to go into here and I'm going to go back to our documentation. And there's two joins we want to look at. What we're going to do is join the actors and the films using those three tables. So I'm going to click on the first one here. And I'm going to click on that. Hit execute. And you're going to see you get the film name and then the actor name. So that's one way of doing it. So what we also do is we have a second one that I think is a little bit nicer. And the second query, you click on that. that in. And what you're going to get is... The movie name, and then the actors um, it, with a comma-separated list. So there's two ways of parsing the data. It's, it's joining the three tables. The keys are all there, so you can do a join. So this is a, a good example to work with to test the database. So that's it for the SQL Server single instance. So I'm going to log out and go back in here, and I'm going to go back to the... Um, validate script and the second server is this managed SQL instance. We'll click on that. We will put it back in here. Uh, the SQL admin, I don't trust the remember, so I'm going to copy that, put that in there. And I'm going to do Paglia. And you can see I'm all in the second database, this is the managed server instance, the one that's really expensive. So what I can do is, you know, you can go see, okay, film stats. Uh, there's all sorts of tables in here with foreign keys. So like the country, I know it's a good category. Film. Payment. All right, I beat that to death. So what we want to do is do that um, final query that we did on the second database. Because everything else is exactly the same. Um, it's just a different endpoint. So pipe that in there. And there you go. This is the second database, and we're doing the exact same query. So that's pretty much it for the database. You use this uh, admin or interface, um, which is, is a pretty simple interface to access your database. So I'm going to log out of that. And so like we said, these things are really expensive. So at this point, you want to be a good steward of your cloud account. And you want to go back to your development environment, and let's do a destroy. And this also takes uh, 15 to 20 minutes.